So the conference announcement gets right to the point. What does it mean to study medieval France today when academic research and funding trends increasingly seem to dissenter France? Take a look at the world. The program of this year's Medieval Academy meeting mirrors this prospect featuring Dutch hot makers, rodents of indeterminate nationality, and hunting culture in Central and East Asia, with a slim menu of French topics sprinkled in. This is not a bad thing, for it reminds us, as we've been hearing, that medieval France, far from hermetically sealed, was globally connected. These two days in Los Angeles have taken us to Saracen empires, Africa, Outremer, indeed around the world and into realms of imagination beyond. Now, architecture is conspicuously absent from this dynamic international conversation. Ironically, the dearth of the great church from the current scholarly stage comes at a time of intense mass media attention. To look beyond France for just a moment, last Sunday's New York Times, February the 19th, highlighted the continual maintenance work at Milan Cathedral that battles marble weathering and pollution with a combination of sensors and hands-on craftsmanship. The appearance of Primo Carnera, the heavyweight boxing champion in the 1930s, which you see on the right, and Abraham Lincoln among the Duomo's imagery testifies to its ongoing transformations. It's a living building. The restoration or repainting of Shark Cathedral here sparked sharp public debate, ranging from praise as careful and responsible to calling the work a scandal and even a rape. And then there's Notre Dame in Paris that Patrick Boucheron has spoken about so powerfully, about which more in a few moments. What is the future of French Gothic architecture when the field balances between historic fragments and digital technology, such as the total scan that is in process on the right? Chat GPT, the recently developed AI bot that has clouded academia's future, told me, uh, quote, in terms of the future of French Gothic architecture, it is difficult to predict with certainty. But that future will depend on a variety of factors, including cultural trends, technological advances, and societal needs. End quote. Not quite satisfied, I pressed further uh, uh, on G chat GPT asking, so what technologies might be useful for future study of Gothic architecture? Immediately, it replied, quote, there are several technologies that can be used to study the future of French Gothic architecture. Here are a few and I'm still quoting. Building information modeling, a 3D modeling technology to study the structural and architectural features, their components and systems. Virtual reality, as on the left, allows users to immerse themselves in a simulated environment. 3D scanning, as on the right, creates high resolution digital models that can be used, that can be useful for preservation and restoration efforts. Four, augmented reality allows users to overlay digital information onto the physical world, end quote. Now this afternoon, I would like to think together with you about this technological dimension involved in the study of French Gothic architecture. Of course, technology and the Gothic have a longstanding connection. 
The, calibra the calibraphic gravity defying effects of French Gothic resulted from the confluence of new technologies of thought, planning, and construction, such as the integration of drawing into the design process and the use of metal in Saint Nazaire Carcassonne to reinforce an emaciated structure. If you look closely, you can see uh, the slim iron bars tying uh, those thin piers together. In the 19th century, science and machine technology intersected to explain the Gothic uh, architectural skeleton. A skeleton, machines, the Gothic uh, structure as a kind of anatomy itself. In our 21st century, doubts have been raised about the real value of digital technology with expressions of anxiety as to whether it includes real engagement with historic buildings. To borrow Victor Hugo's words, will this technology fill that rigorous on-site study? Is it merely a superficial representational development, a sharper pencil, if you will, to add to hand drawing, photography, film, and video? Recent projects suggest the positive potential of digital technology to unlock doors to an expanded field of inquiry by, en by enabling new possibilities for the study of the medieval world. One, documentation and analysis. Let us go to the Cathedral of Clermont-Ferrand and the full-scale drawings on the choir terrace pavement indicated by the red arrow. The collection of the choir, which you see here, compiled during the late 13th and early 14th centuries includes three legible window tracery patterns the ruins of two others, two versions of an open work flyer, five arcs, and two portal elevations complete with archivolts and gables. This ensemble is the focus of an ongoing uh, project I am pursuing with Stefan van Liefering, my colleague at Columbia University. We have started with the five arcs etched over two radiating chapels of the choir, which have been ignored. What do they represent? Bolt ribs, flyer arches, rejected designs, nothing. A major hurdle to their identification lies in coordinating the drawings on the flat pavement with sections of the building that are unreachable. Combining, combining hand and total station measurements with photographs of the terrace, we produced calibrated photogrammetric models, such as you see on the right, of the drawings using Agisoft PhotoScan, now Agisoft Metashape. Point clouds were converted into Autodesk Recap and imported into AutoCAD making it possible to compare the geometry and dimensions of the drawings to the building, which is what you see there on the right. Thanks to the access allowed by the photogrammetry, the arcs radii could be matched with the models of the flyers, suggesting that the drawings played an active role in their fabrication. The, their terse lines set out a flexible and multi-use pattern that could determine the span and shape of the choir flyers, construct formwork, and you can see uh, here uh, the scaffolding holding uh, the Notre Dame buttresses into place, but certainly uh, gives a fair approximation of medieval uh, uh, constructional scaffolding, generate templates to cut voussoirs and verify the accuracy of the masonry before installation. Setting out quadrant, arc, uh, quadrant arcs as on the left, illustrate uh, one technique uh, that builders invented to, in, to avoid constructing flyer arches 
that it exerted inward and downward destabilizing pressure on the clear story wall on the bottom right left hand uh, drawing, yet a technique uh, that allowed leeway uh, in uh, the slope and placement of the flyers. The second phase of our project focuses on the transept portals, north on the left, south on the right. At around 10 meters by eight meters, so that's about 35 feet by 27 feet, these spectacular representations are among the largest extant Gothic drawings. AutoCAD renderings of the portal arcs here, the north, correspond precisely to the built structure, so on the right. Notice that the drawings represent the archivolts as they would be built along the diagonal line of the portal wall. Now, what this required uh, is projecting the dimensions of the planned portals onto the flat surface of the terrace, an operation that involved the rotation of the archivolts through 45 degrees, that is, the square root of two. Thus the, draftsman create, thus, the draftsman created working drawings that contain both two- and three-dimensional information. And this was thought to be a development of Renaissance uh, architectural design. The portal elevations etched into the terrace established the matrix from which templates and cutting instructions for the masons could be generated for the archivolt and molding components. And kind of speculative uh, block there uh, shows how uh, the dimensions of uh, the drawing could be transferred uh, to a block uh, in preparation. Thanks to the power of digital technologies to document the inaccessible, to slice through solid stone to extract sections, and to capture with precision the intricacy of finely scaled forms, a sharper picture emerges of the conceptual agility that informed the technical skill of Gothic builders. Moss and lichen has spread steadily, obscuring significant sections of the Claremont Terrace drawings, as you can see on the right, that uh, picture taken last summer. Especially acute on the north side, the deterioration appears to be accelerating, exacerbated by effects of weathering that have further compromised the legibility of the drawings. The contribution of digital technology will be crucial to developing a protocol for the conservation of this unique archive of architectural drawings and to gain further insight into their role in the design and construction process. Two, Notre Dame. And it's kind of a miracle. Uh, my slides, I think, uh, beautifully uh, 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 fit together with those uh, that uh, Patrick Boustron just showed. In the wake of the near destruction of the cathedral on April the 15th, 2019, an agenda of technology has been called in to assess the damage and guide a restoration informed by an enhanced understanding of the structure. What the chat GPT list does not do, at least yet, is imagine that technology applied in innovative ways to historical architecture. Now, who would use, for example, who would use ground penetrating radar, GPR, to assess vaults, not the most, you know, the highest uh, structural element in the building. Uh, well, uh, members of the CNRS Pierre or Stone Working Group, including Yves Gallet, Christian Camerlink, and Hugh Delambilly, did. This is exactly what they did. Holes in the Paris vault, which we've already seen. Here is a close up uh, on uh, the left. Holes in the Paris uh, vaults reveal their astonishing thinness, 
12 to 15 centimeters. GPR, controlled by a 3D scan and photogrammetry, measured the vaults, the contemporary vaults at Saul's Cathedral. Uh, here are two images from that study on the right. They measured the vaults at Saul's at around 35 centimeters, more than twice the thickness uh, at Paris. Was this one reason that the architect succeeded in raising the vault of Notre Dame to a record height of 32 meters? As the authors of a 2022 uh, Bulletin Monumental report declare, vault thickness is one factor among many, uh, among many parameters in the mechanical behavior of a structure that include vessel width, vault curvature, wall thickness, ribbon arch thickness, stone density, mortar quality and weight, uh, roof weight, and buttressing configuration. As at Clermont, technology, more than just a sharp pencil, retrieves data embedded uh, in buildings to study goth Gothic architecture as a complex network of materials, forces, and forms. Before leaving Notre Dame, I just have to, I have to get something off my chest. Despite the innovative concentration of technology that aims to ready the cathedral for the Olympics of 2024, ritualistic use and tourism, the vision driving the reconstruction faces the past. In 2020, the French Senate passed a bill requiring the reconstruction to be faithful to its, quote, last known visual state, end quote. That is Notre Dame, you see here, as we knew it on April the 14th, 2019, in order to, quote, guarantee the authenticity, the harmony, and the coherence of this masterpiece of Gothic architecture, end quote. And Emmanuel Macron, despite initial enthusiasm for a contemporary gesture, has come around to embrace this point of view, no doubt, uh, uh, and as I think uh, Monsieur Bouchon has confirmed, a political calculation. Enshrining the mid-19th century version uh, of the cathedral, despite the fact that it was fashioned across seven centuries, stops time to deny Notre Dame a meaningful future. A contemporary gesture need not be a glass roof, uh, a, a crystalline spire, uh, or uh, a flamboyant bronze spire. Whether might the 21st century leave its mark by rectifying inauthentic alterations. One example, recorded in 1852 by a radical new technology photography, the 13th century tr south transept rose that you see on the left was cranked 15 degrees by Viollet le Duc during the restoration on the right, supposedly to ensure its structural stability. But the new symmetrical pattern lost the rotational energy of the, orig of the original design. Returning the rose to its last known original state, visual state, that recovers the harmony of the designs of Jean de Chell and Pierre de Montreuil, enlivens Notre Dame's future by respecting its past. Reassembly. Reconstruction moves our discussion about the future toward a different scale and set of experiences. Rather than a drawing, a vault, or a single building, let's think of Gothic architecture, as has already been mentioned, and let's think of Gothic architecture as an archive. The, the catalogs and narratives of architectural history have been shaped by extant old buildings. But what about survivors? that are fragments, ruins, images, or words on paper. As Beata Fricke and Adrian Kindler write in Destroyed, Disappeared, Lost, Never Were, quote, 
if the past is a picture puzzle to be reassembled piece by piece, missing pieces matter, end quote. Medieval Paris here, seen largely in this 1615 map, offers just such a vast puzzle with most of its pieces missing. Uh, and you can see uh, here coded in yellow uh, are the surviving uh, medieval churches from the city, not many. Nevertheless, a picture has been composed familiar to everyone, highlighted by Notre Dame and the Royal Saint-Chapelle. The city's architecture has been defined and described by its ecclesiastical examples that showcase structural daring, visual refinement, and ornamental opulence. But would our understanding of the architectural landscape change if at least a few spaces were filled and the cast of characters expanded by reassembling dispersed architectural, graphic, and written records? Meredith Cohen, Christine Tanton, and their team have resurrected the Virgin Chapel of the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, built between about 1235 and 1255 by Pierre de Montreuil, whom we just met at the south transept of Notre Dame. Their compelling model here in the two slides above and supporting evidence in the two slides below recover the Virgin Chapel uh, in such detail uh, that it can, I think, uh, be substantively studied while also confirming its place within the deluxe sphere of Rayonnon architecture. But let's add another building to the cityscape, the contemporary Franciscan convent church of Saint-Marie Madeleine, just a stone's throw from Saint-Germain inside the walls of the left bank. You can see it from the left. Supported logistically, financially, and materially, windows and liturgical manuscripts from projects start to finish by Louis IX, the convent was a hub of academic and public religious life in the university and the city. It's an important building and a large one too. Literally no stone of the church has turned up. Nevertheless, Archaeological and visual evidence fits together in a credible reconstruction, one that conveys a different impression of space than the romantic views of the ruin, your exterior and now the interior. The interior appears taller and narrower, sharper, uh, in a word, more gothic in character. It also introduces a very different flavor uh, into Parisian architecture, a departure from the so-called court style and one that is missing uh, among surviving structures. I love Carol Symes' uh, reference or metaphor of a uh, 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 reference to different vernaculars, uh, the Saint-Chapelle being the kind of prestige vernacular uh, here, uh, something rather different. A decided retrospection invests the design uh, of the Franciscan church uh, to express in built terms the values of the order, connecting this church back to the early Christian past as the fifth century Santa Sabina in Rome left, uh, uh, as well as to an international field of contemporary mendicant architectural projects. Additional graphic images and the notebook sketches of Theodore Vaquet, an archeologist, take us into the cloister where we find an architecture that is notably different and progressive. There the cloister on the left, uh, below uh, a ground, sketched ground plan of uh, the chapter house and on the right, uh, the arcade of the chapter house uh, entrance. The piers of the chapter house entrance are composed of identical quadrants. 
in line with up to the up to the minute developments of rationalized design and production during the 13th century. Similar uh, masonry techniques found at the Saint Chapelle. Capitals are illuminated as support and arch fuse into a continuous streamlined form that heralds the late Gothic. And here you can see those piers in place, the chapel house entry. The Collège de Navarre reveals another missing layer of the medieval built environment in Paris. Founded by Queen Jean, uh, Jean de Navarre, uh, the wife, the consort of Philip IV, uh, 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 and built between 139 and 15, the Collège de Navarre achieves one of the first distinctive academic campuses, a mixed use original that brings together communal, domestic, and religious building types and spaces. Albert Lenoir's plans and elevations facilitate modeling the college chapel that has been judged a copy of the prestigious San Chapelle. Here, a model uh, drawing largely on Lenoir's views uh, of uh, the exterior envelope of the chapel, and here, a comparison uh, of uh, the reconstructed uh, uh, chapel of the college and the San Chapelle. Now, although the, these have been uh, compared uh, and both are royal projects, the ne Navarre Chapel is, at least in my opinion, the anti San Chapelle. Squat, strong decoration, no window tracery. It's not because I left it out, uh, and uh, wooden vaulted. Uh, this was an architecture appropriate to the disciplined atmosphere, no distractions, boys, that Jean de Navarre sought to create in the college. The difference in tenor or vernacular is a result of conscious choice, a point underscored by the fact that the chapel was the work of Pierre de Verinfois, architect of the extravagant north transept of Mo Cathedral on the right, which also attracted the Queen's financial support. So same architect, same patron of these two buildings, rather different results. The college in the Franciscan convent invite us to rethink not only the architectural scene in medieval Paris that was seasoned by an aesthetic of simplicity, even in elite projects, but also entrenched notions of our entrenched notions of patronal taste and, and the inventive range of builders. No longer can, I think, we hold uh, to uh, the cliche of one man, one builder, one form. Lastly, environments. In closing, let us return to the picture of the puzzle. For as resonant as these discrete pieces may be, they are part of an encyclopedic, uh, they are part of an encyclopedic environment. Is the next step to connect the Virgin Chapel of Saint Germain des Prés to the Franciscans, to the Collège de Navarre, to Notre Dame, to experience not only the buildings, but the spaces around and in between? a visual equivalent to John Baldwin's verbal snapshot of Paris in Paris 1200. Commercial animations such as this attempt to immerse us in the past, although the urban encounter that is largely a, a superficial bold d'oiseau. The interactive 3D models of UCLA's Paris past and present that quote, aim to make medieval architecture and urban life more accessible, hint, dare I say promise, uh, uh, hint at a more substantive, less scripted engagement. So Meredith, get busy. Is this leading to a version or versions of the metaverse, 
much in the news of late, described as, quote, a location or series of locations where one can enter, move around as an avatar, and interact with objects through virtual, augmented, and mixed reality, end quote. A world where, at least according to Mark Zuckerberg, there is no longer a distinction between real and digital. However, rather than a platform populated by luxury villas floating on icebergs, you see on the left, or virtual malls selling NFTs, these, our initiatives are anchored to and informed by insistent physical presence. The Claremont drawings, the Notre Dame vaults, the Lady uh, Chapel arcades in the square Laurent Proche. Albert Lenoir's drawings, books, engravings, photographs. While we cannot hope to inhabit medieval France, it remains an open book, maybe even a place where we can meet in its reconst reconstituted spaces. Still a work in progress, medieval France offers the opportunity, borrowing words again from Beata Frick and Aidan Kummer, to collaboratively explore what the past entangled in the present, and I would add, looking to the future might yet be. Thank you.